Uh, hey guys, what's going on? Scooter life. Living that scooter life. I'm not living a scooter life. I've easily got a 50cc advantage over that guy. Easily. So I feel like it's been a forever minute since we've had a chance to talk. And it's not been you, it's been me. It's my bad. Let's cut right to the chase. Yes, I've been lazy. Yes, I've been riding. No, I've not been making videos or editing videos. As a matter of fact, this is the first time that all of the batteries on all of my electronic equipment related to motovlogging have been charged. I even have two spare batteries with me today. I'm feeling really ambitious as if I'm gonna rip through three batteries worth of camera life. That's gonna be a big nope. So I'm out today on the CRF 250L. <coughs> Excuse me. I am inhaling huge quantities of pollen because it is right, <coughs> oh God, it is right at the beginning of pollen season. For those of you that don't know, and I don't know why you would know unless you've been snooping through my medicine cabinet, I do have pollen allergies and I do take allergy medication over the counter. It's not the hard stuff. That's really uninteresting. That's really uninteresting. It has been so long since we've had a chance to talk. So much has happened and I can't tell you about any of it. <laughs> not entirely sure. I can't tell you all of it yet. It's not that interesting. It's not that exciting. There's no, there's no great news. I have had to move house. The circumstances under which that occurred. Um, we'll just say, you know, weren't the best. But on the upside, I have my health. On the upside, I have a job. Same job. Well, sort of same job, same place. Sort of different job. I got moved around in, in the company, uh, which is actually kind of cool because I'm getting a chance to learn a little something new about the industry I'm in. I was kind of in the engineering department and then I got moved into the administrative department and you can probably tell by my demeanor that I probably am not the best cut out for administrative duty. <laughs> when it comes to dealing with people diplomatically, I am not the best. Don't come to me if you want diplomacy. If you want someone to tell you the honest truth and probably sound like a dick in the process, you've come to the right place. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I've now moved into uh, more of a quality role, quality assurance, uh, which is, Kind of a interesting, interesting thing. My journeys, I, what the fuck is going on here? I never thought that uh, my journeys in life would take me to that place, but they did. So that's kind of cool. I love learning new stuff. I'm pretty good at self-teaching myself. Self-teaching myself? Myself. Hello, self. Are you myself good at myself teaching? Um, yeah, I'm pretty good at teaching myself stuff. And then I'm actually pretty good at learning stuff once I've capped out on the knowledge that I can seek on my own. So I am well suited and primed for learning new shit. Plus who doesn't want to learn new shit? Especially when you're 46. <laughs> yeah. Meaner, neener, neener. Meaner, neener, neener. Got some new mirrors on here. I got rid of those big stocky fucking elephant ears. What you call them? insect ears. These are probably just barely within the, the legality limit, but believe it or not, you can actually see behind you. I'm not sponsored, just a, uh, just a user, but these are made by a company called PowerMad. And uh, yeah, they seem to be doing the trick. This is the first ride I've taken with them on here. I've gone like eight miles and they haven't fallen off yet, so pff, A plus. <laughs> this looks like a cluster Fuckola. I am not at all interested in getting involved in whatever the fuck this traffic jam is leading to. Mm, maybe it's just rush hour traffic. I don't know. It's 6.30. I don't ever get up this way during rush hour, so I have no idea what the traffic situation is like this time of day. But hopefully one of these kind of people will let me uh, cut in front of them because I need to take a lift. That worked out okay, I guess. I'm sure that guy was not expecting me, but uh, he left a gap. I took it. 
you never realize how uneven pavement is until you got to ride at like two miles an hour over it. Then you realize, you know what, that shit's fucking rough. <laughs> Uh, maybe part of that is the knobbies? <laughs> Duh. Hey, what do you think? Does the motorcycle ride rough because it's on knobbly tires? Could be. I need to turn left up here, but I'm not one of those people who's going to try to bomb it down this center lane to get to the light. For sure, I would get run the fuck over. How about somebody like this guy? No offense to him, he had full, full rightful use of that lane. Okay, I think I can safely make a maneuver. Yes! We are maneuvering! The long suckers! Oh my lord. Yep, definitely glad I don't have to go straight. Fuck that noise. Some of you might be thinking to yourself, but Mr. Mogul, it's been so long since we've seen you. What is the state of your motorcycle collection? To which I would reply, please, please, Mr. Mogul was my father. Call me Rogue. <laughs> uh, state of the collection is as it was. CRF250L, which I'm on right now. Uh, Ducati Hyper Motard, which is at my living place in a shed and a uh, victory cross country which is in storage right now but what is the future of the collection you may ask well that is a bit more difficult to figure out because i don't fucking know what i'm thinking actually i've pretty much already made the decision because <laughs> i already i already have parts on order so i'm already committed at least to part of this phase one the crf is going to get converted to super moto mode so i have 17 inch wheels and tires or for those of you that don't know what a supermoto is if you've been dying under a rock for the last 15 years basically a supermoto is just a dirt style bike with street rims and tires on it that's an oversimplification but that's all we have time for <laughs> i got here first so i'm gonna go so i've got a set of warp nines Spoked supermoto wheels in size 17 coming for this. We're getting rid of the knobbies. I really don't do a whole lot of off-road anymore since I royally shattered the absolute fuck out of my elbow, which still hurts from time to time, which, uh, yeah, I, if, if I can give you any piece of advice, <laughs> don't do that. <coughs> and probably the best way you can avoid doing that would be to wear your armor when you're off-road uh, and or don't go off-roading. So my off-roading days are at least beside me, if not behind me. So yeah, this motorcycle is going to get converted mostly to street use. Of course, any of you that know anything about supermotors know that people take supermotors off-road all the time. And when I want to do that, I can. I'm still probably keeping these wheels so I can swap back over to knob tires anytime that I want to. But uh, yeah, so what that does is it gives me kind of a, a huge overlap between this and the Hyper Motard with one large problem. This motorcycle does not have fuck all for horsepower, but that doesn't matter. Uh, I think long-term goals, probably selling the Hyper Motard. Also, probably selling the Victory. Uh, when I get those two things done, what I'm going to do is roll that money into a Ducati Multistrada. So, I'll tell you why. Because the Multistrada is kind of like that perfect, you know, it's where the hooliganness of the Hyper Motard and the touringness of the Victory Cross Country sort of collide with one another. You want to go rip shit up on the Multistrada? You can. And if you want to ride out to the mountains or do a, you know, two, three, four hundred mile day, it is more than capable of doing that. I've been talking about the Multistrada multi for at least three years now, so I think it's probably time that I just, you know, oh, fuck this. I'm not going that way. I can uh, follow my bliss, as they say. Follow my bliss and just freaking get one. However, you know, getting that kind of money together is, uh, yeah, it's pretty severe. Oh, also, yes, I completely forgot about the uh, Honda CB500 or CB550. That's been so long since I've ridden it, I may not even know what the frick it is anymore. Yeah, 1974 Honda CB550. Uh, that is going to be up for sale. Longtime watchers may know that I said, I'll never sell this motorcycle. But guess what? I am going to put it up for sale. I don't ride it. I don't like working on it anymore. I don't need four motorcycles. It's not registered. It's not insured. So honestly, it's not costing me any money right now, except to store it, which 
in all honesty, uh, storing it in a fucking storage unit is probably more expensive <laughs> on a yearly basis than, uh, than insurance and tags for it. You can freaking believe that. But here's a good reason why I want to keep this bike and use it on street duty. There's going to be a whole lot of people who talk a lot of shit about slow motorcycles and this motorcycle no doubt is <clears throat> slow. But what I'm here to tell you is that for me that is not a problem. Because there are not many places around here that you can actually stretch the legs of a 150 horsepower superbike uh, sidebar, although I still want one. Um, or for that matter, 110 horsepower Ducati Motard. You know, you're gonna spend 85% of your time putting along in second gear, 35 miles an hour behind some grandpa. You know, nothing against grandpas, but I don't know where the hell he's going, but he sure is not in a freaking hurry, if you know what I mean. But riding a lower horsepower motorcycle does a couple of things. Number one, it teaches you conservation of momentum. Now, some of you might be shaking your head, saying, I don't know what the hell that even means. But in the low horsepower world, and this applies to cars as well as motorcycles, conservation of momentum basically means that if you slow down, you take a huge penalty because it takes you a long, a long time to speed back up again. So, in theory, conservation of momentum, if you learn that, means that you're gonna be a very quote-unquote economical with the use of braking um, and you probably learn you learn to carry more of what they call mid-corner speed and this is what separates fast people from slow people I think it's Vic Elford wrote a great book about how to drive fast but his theory was, like, the difference between a novice and a mid-level person is corner entry speed. The difference between a mid-level person and an experienced person is corner exit speed. And then the difference between an experienced person and a fucking professional is mid-corner speed. So it's not until you sort of connect all of those things together. The corner entry, mid-corner speed, corner exit, you connect all those things together and you end up going faster. This is track stuff, not street stuff. Or, I mean, you can apply it to street, but um, I that was totally off on a freaking tangent. I am talking like a madman because it's been forever since we've had a chance to talk. But you know, if you are on the quest for sharpening your riding skills it seems to me not a professional not an instructor not anyone who you should take the freaking advice of but it seems to me that riding a slow motorcycle will teach you the fundamentals of cornering speed and then hopefully that skill is you know that skill is learned well enough within you that if you do transfer to a faster motorcycle then you'll be able to cope with it instead of you know, being totally inexperienced, coming into a corner at you know, 90 fucking miles an hour, throwing out the anchor and braking like a madman, and then putting through the corner so freaking slow that almost everyone rear ends you. You know, that's that's what inexperienced riders do. They're afraid of corners, as well they should be. So you gotta work up to that slowly. Good way to do that, get a slow motorcycle. So, you know, I'm not gonna say that I'm a super experienced motorcyclist. I think I'm pretty good. I think I'm reasonably fast. The reason why I like riding slow motorcycles is because you can use 100% of the throttle 88% of the time. And, you know, this thing won't break triple digits. I do not believe that this will even go going to jail speeds. I could get a ticket on it for freaking sure, but I doubt very seriously that an officer is going to be very inclined to haul me off to jail for doing, you know, 70 and a 55 versus on the Hyper Motard where I could very easily be doing 100. So I, can, I can get this thing up into 6 gear. Of course it's geared so low because it's geared for dirt. 
That's something else I'm going to do when I change over to Supermoto because I'm, I'm going to uh, relax the gearing a little bit. Because again, you know, I'm not looking for top speed and I'm not looking for massive acceleration. This thing will get out of its own way perfectly fine. It's, you know, 22 horsepower. It's plenty freaking fun. I can't even imagine uh, like how much whatever frictional loss these knobby tires give. If I like, if I pull in the clutch and just coast, the motorcycle naturally comes to a stop pretty quickly. Look at that. This is flat. We're losing like three to four miles per hour every hundred feet or so. Not a mathematician. I hope I've, uh, yeah, I hope I've connected everything up correctly. I, I really hope that this is getting recorded because, you know, that's the worst thing about motor vlogging or any vlogging really is, you know, you go out and you blab for an hour and a half to two hours and then you come home and you realize you got nothing but fucking wind noise. Nobody wants to listen to fucking wind noise because that's fucking bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> that clutch slip though, woo! Nope, not pulling any six gear wheelies today. Uh, pro tip, I do not ever pull six gear wheelies. Not gonna do it, not this guy. Alright, other things to share. Uh, oh, right. Uh, uh, Super Moto Wheels, uh, CRF250L. Right. One thing I will not be doing is hooliganing. I cannot do wheelies. I'm sorry, I can't do them. I'm too fucking old to learn. I don't give a shit. If you want to see wheelies, there's plenty of channels that you can go watch for that. I don't think anybody that watches me really wants to see wheelies. Actually, I'm not sure what the fuck anyone who watches me wants to see anyhow. But, you know, the three or four views that I probably will get on this video, you know, thank you for coming. Thanks for stopping by. Tell your friends. Hello, Lake. Oh, wow, look at the fog. That's cool. Or fog, what is that? Uh, mist, mist, mist? That's mist. No, that's smoke. <laughs> that's definitely something is on fire. Okay, I take it back. That's not cool. Because it's not fog, it's smoke. Something on fire. That's usually bad. There's a lot of woods here. How could something be on fire? It has been raining non-stop these past couple days. You know what? If somebody's burning something, that means that they really tried fucking hard to get whatever it is that's on fire currently on fire. So, slow clap. Slow clap for you guys. Congratulations. We said that. We still can do the... Yeah, congratulations. Ha, you're burning something. Uh, yeah, so no wheelies, um, probably no off-road or limited off-road. It rains so much here now that it's really difficult to go off-road anyhow, unless you want to be like covered in mud from head to toe, which gotta be honest, been there. It's not that fun. A little damp, that's cool. But yeah, you know, totally covered in mud. Nah, no thanks. This is where I get off. The road. Really? You're gonna be watering now? I mean, it rained like five inches the past couple days. Oh well. See, so yeah, basically this is what I'm talking about. You know, it's all about the flow. This motorcycle probably can't get up fast enough on this road for me to not be able to navigate a corner correctly. I've got plenty of time to sight my way all the way through the corner. The knobbies give me that feeling that, you know, I have no grip, which they don't, so I can't wait until I have something that actually does have some grip. Yeah, there's just something real zen about going fast on a on a underpowered motorcycle. Or not going fast. There's something about riding an underpowered motorcycle uh, quickly, quickly. Yeah, because underpowered motorcycles don't go fast. They only go quickly. If that. If you're lucky, they go quickly. If you're unlucky, an underpowered motorcycle goes slow. In which case, that's not fun. <laughs> yeah, we're doing about 60, you know, on a road that has a 55 mile an hour speed limit. <laughs> So technically we're not even really speeding. We're just having fun! I'll tell you what else is uh, been looking fun. Been riding a lot, uh, riding, what? Been watching a lot of riding with Tom videos where he's riding through the desert. That looks like so much fucking fun. That's another reason why I'd love to keep this motorcycle is to do some sort of, some sort of off-road trip. You know, ride the Trans-America Trail or something like that. I think this would be a great motorcycle for it. Gets great gas mileage, like 51 miles per gallon. That's super. It'll carry shit. Hey, that's cool. It's a little bit heavy for its engine size, but you know, it's not, it's not a complete porker. It's not a thousand pounds. Woo. This is where I stop for my Zen, gather my chi. Do you know what I'm saying? It's all about that chi, bitches. Holy crap. Look at how fucking beautiful that is. Woo. Oh, uh, can you see right down here? That is nothing but a cesspool of pollen. 
Mmm, North Carolina in the spring. You've got to love it. All right, we're gonna take a quick breather. And away we go. What am I afraid of, little roads? This is all about the flow, right here. Whitening this little puppy out, oh yeah. This is where the houses start, so I generally slow down here. You don't need to go tearing ass past people's houses. That just makes them unhappy. I know it makes me unhappy when people tear ass past my house. Another thing about this motorcycle that's so great, with this seat concept seat on it, it is really comfortable. This is way more comfortable than the Hyper Motard. <laughs> I hate to even say that, but it is. Hello, horses! Hello, hello! So yeah, guys, I think that's about all I've got to say for today. Thank you for coming on this little after work rip with me. This has been great. As always, you have been wonderful. I have just been riding a motorcycle, and I will talk to you guys next time. How did you get on the back side of the mirror? I was riding so slow that the bug rear-ended my mirror. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, and this is for Amp Moto. Amp, you need to get a CRF 250 out. Seriously, just get one and then let's go riding. <laughs> Sweet!